Hi watercolor fans, this is Trisha, and today I'm going to be showing you how to create the sweet summer scene. Let me show you some of the products we're going to be using to create this project. I used the small boat from the watercolor boat set, the sitting boy and girl from the little girl and boy sets, as well as the, the small leaf bunch from the original foliage set. So I started off by placing the boy and girl onto my acrylic block together. I did this, well, because I wanted to make sure I had the spacing right, and let's face it, I'm lazy, and I didn't want to get out my stamp positioner. So I just inked them up with a really light Marvy marker. I filmed this a while ago, and since then, Art Impressions has switched over from Marvy to Tombow markers, and I'll talk about this in a little bit. No matter what brand you're using, just use a lighter gray or brown. This way, the skin tones on the little ones doesn't get too altered too much. So I'm putting a mask, I created a mask with an oval die, and I'm just putting it in the middle of my page. This way it's going to protect, I wanted it to kind of give a circle so I knew where to put my, my guys and everything, and it's just really nice when you, when you mask off and it creates a border. So I'm stamping the, two, the little boy and little girl down, and now I'm taking the fine tip of that marker and I'm just drawing some lines. I wanted it to look like they were wearing shorts and a bathing suit. So I just kind of drew those lines in and I, I, when I inked them up, I didn't, I didn't use, I kind of got rid of some of the lines so that it did look like a bathing suit um, that she was wearing. So now I'm just coming in here with my paintbrush and some water. And these images are so small, you really don't want a ton of water on your brush. And so I'm just pulling, just pulling the color out and softening it up a little bit. So as I do that and pull the color out of all of those lines, I'll go into the Marvy Tombow thing. So what happened is, what I think has happened, is that Marvy was just, they were having a hard time getting... Um, the African Violet and the sepia markers, which are our most popular. And they were having a hard time getting them. And they were, they were selling out and then they were having long wait times to get more in. So I think they just found that get the Tombow was just easier and we can get them better. Um, I'm thinking that's what it is. I haven't talked to anyone over at Art Impressions to really get the story as to why they switched. Um, I like both of them just the same. I was really used to my Marvies, but now that I've been creating for a while with my Tombos, I really like the fact that they have a big set. So I'm one of those I'm one of those people that those crafty people who have to have everything. I need all of the colors. So I did buy the the complete set as well as in December they came out with a 12 new markers and I had to get those too because I that's just what I do and then I bought a little case because I didn't really like the the, the kit or the case that it came in the little grid that that they came in it was always falling apart and I had it taped and if they fell on the floor they didn't go back in right it just was I hated it so they have this really nice case now that I have it in it has a handle it has a cover so I don't have to worry about my my markers being all over the place so let's go back to what we're doing here so what I'm doing is now that I've pulled all the color out of the lines I'm just making the sand so I used a couple of different markers and these happen to be Tombow markers because I really liked the, the sand colors in the Tombows and I always use them anyways on, on any scenes that I was doing with the sand. So I used a really light brown and then I used a peach col type color. Um, and I'll link all of, the, all of the products below if you're interested in, in the colors that I used, but I find the combination of those two along with a brown gives a really nice sand color. So I put I made like a line because that's where I wanted the sand to end and the water to begin. And now I'm just really taking, I'm taking the color from my palette and I'm just going around and putting, putting some sand around them, making 
the shadows behind them. So my light source is kind of in the middle of the page. So I'm putting a shadow behind her to the right and to him to the left. And then I'm just varying the colors, varying how much water and the lightness and just kind of spreading it out. I do, however, want to come all the way down to where that mask is because what's going to happen by the end is we want to make sure that you see that it's kind of like framed in sort of. So I am now using, I believe, a sepia to create a darker shadow behind them so that it really looks like they're sitting into the sand. Sand is one of the fav my favorites. I like to do scenes with sand in them and I just think it's really fun to to do these outdoor scenes. So I'm going to continue to add some water, some sand. Now I'm I'm taking taking some sepia and I'm going to start working on these little kids. So I'm creating, you want to keep the top of their head light, the top of their hair. So like with her little buns on the sides of her head, you want to keep those really light. So I'm kind of going from the bottom to the top because I want the darkest color to be at the bottom and, the, and I want it to move gradually to the top. So I'm letting it dry and then I'm coming in with another layer of color. So I'm slowly building up the color like we should, but I'm leaving that highlight at the very top. And this is something that we do. You, you want to make sure you're not going to put a ton of color down at one time because it's just not going to, it's not going to look good. So you want to start small start light and then and layer layer your colors layer up your colors so that you get a nice deep color and it's and it's very smooth so now i took most of the water out of my brush and i got some color on it and i'm just darkening in that very bottom and i'm using kind of a flicking motion to give it some depth and to give it some interest so it looks like those are strands of hair and not just a blob of color. And you do that with a very, very small amount of water, just enough to get it to move. And then letting it dry in between as well. And then as you lay it down, then you can clean your brush off using hardly any water and then pull the color up so that it gives a kind of a gradation of dark to light. And that's where you're gonna get your depth. And then you can continue to add the color or you can go on to something else and then come back if you feel it's light. You can always come back and add more. So now I'm using a really light peach color for the, for the skin. And again, this is, there's such a small area that you want to use a, just a little bit of water and some color, and then you want to layer in, just keep layering. Even no matter what, what color you're using for the skin, you still want to layer it up. So you want to start really light and then gradually make it darker. So I did their necks and their little arms, and now I just put some color on his, on his legs, and I'm going to do the same with her. I'm just putting that very first coating down and then I'll come in and as I as I add color I want to make sure the right hand side of him and the left hand side of her is a little bit lighter because that's where the sun's going to be hitting them and you want it to have dimension so you want darker on the sides lighter in the middle you're always going to have that highlight so make sure you don't Get rid of all your white space because that's where you're going to get your highlight from. And then just continue to add that color. Again, I'm just going in and adding some more color here to her, to her skin. 
and you want to make sure you're letting it dry between in between each of these you're gonna let it dry so that would be really fun for him to give him some orange shorts because it's summer and orange is a great color and kind of thought he maybe he was a little bit into blended on into the sand just a bit but not bad so I was very happy with it now I'm making sure that I'm putting darker color along his shirt and then on the left and right hand side of of his legs or his butt just to make sure that his little buns have a little bit of a highlight now that that's dry I'm coming in and I'm just putting a little bit of highlights on the sides closest to her clothing just to give it she looked a little pale to me so I just wanted to add in a little bit of color and then I'm just um, I'm just getting rid of those harsh lines so you see me come in and just kind of soften those harsh lines up so you can do that and you can do that as many times as you want you can come in and, and darken darken those little kids up sometimes I get a little too into the details of those so I do apologize but sometimes I get into a groove and I get I get creating and then I lose all track of time these things could also take you very little time if you don't if you don't go over things as much or if you don't put as much color in and you want just something quick you can definitely do this same project very quickly with just a little bit of color here and there so now I'm adding a little blue to his shirt and you'll notice that on the right hand side of his shirt is going to be the lightest so I'm going to add some shadows underneath his arms as well as to the sides of his shirt and to that that left hand side which would be more in shadow it's it's hard sometimes to get those shadows in watercolor because everything is so light but I just find that if I just gradually build it up then I can get the shadows that I that I like I did this project I found this footage and figured it had been a while since I had put anything on YouTube and I had already edited it I just needed to do the voiceover so today I thought oh today's the day I really love this little cute little scene I did a couple of these these little scenes for some picture frames and I put them up in my bathroom in my house because I just I just love them and I think they're so cute so it was like a whole series I did with little girls and little boys sitting together on beaches and logs and it's really fun in my bathroom I love to look at them every time I go in there So you see I'm just building that color up and then taking a clean brush and just kind of softening the edges out because I don't want any harsh lines so I think he's almost done I just wanted to put a few more little highlights in here and just make it a little bit darker right there underneath his shirt Now we're going to move on, I believe, to her little bathing suit. And I decided that I wanted a nice summery pink. So I just added some pink to her right hand side because that's where it's going to be the darkest. And now I'm just pulling that color from the left to the right or from the right to the left because that highlight's going to be on the left. And I'll come back in and darken her swimsuit up a little bit more. So now I'm inking this little, the little boat. The reason I'm, what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to see, I wanted to look, this perspective to look like they had this little boat between them. So the size of them and the little boat makes the boat look like a little toy. Then I wanted the boat in the background which is the same boat 
But it looks different because it's now set in the background and it looks like it's far away and it's a bigger boat. So that was what I was kind of going for. I wanted them to be playing with a little sailboat while the little sailboat was in the background. And I inked that up with the African violet. And now just, I stamped it off because I wanted it to be lighter. And now I'm just pulling the color out of the lines. And I gotta be very, very careful. You gotta be very careful with this because that little boat is so small. So you really wanna either use a really small paintbrush or just be really careful you don't have too much water on your, on your brush. So I'm taking my, my T-square and I'm just trying to look to where I want that horizon line to be. So I'm kind of moving it around up and down and then with my pencil I'm just going to draw a little line here so that when I go to put in my trees and the boat I, I'll know exactly where to put it. You see me like smoothing down. I want to make sure I don't have any bubbles underneath that mask. And it's got a little tear in it. So I wanted to make sure that it was nice and secure before I started going further. So here's the little boat in the background. Again, inked it up with some African violet. And I stamped it off so it would be, be a little bit on the lighter side. Because if you have too much, if you have too much color, your little boat's going to be very mushy. Trust me. I've done this a few times when I have some videos coming up that show kind of my process when I get new stamps, what do I do with them, um, how do I come up with some ideas. So hopefully I'll have that coming out soon. And I use my stamp positioner a lot. So I'm going to stamp that right up in that corner, up in the right hand corner. And again, I'm going to take some, take a, a pretty not a pretty dry brush and just pull just some highlights out of that out of that boat up there. I was really really thrilled with how this came out and I was I've actually did quite a few of these little projects before I did this one here. I did this one for one of my design team projects. But I have since recreated it several times because I really like it. Especially with kids, people who have kids, you could use a little, another little girl, two little girls, two little boys. Um, we, at this point, have now, Art Impressions has come out with some beach kids. They didn't have the beach kids when I did this. So, those are going to be some really fun stamps to use in the future. Can't wait to do some videos on that. So I'm putting a mask over my boat to protect it because what I'm going to do is we're going to stamp in some some trees and stuff in the background. So I'm also going to put some stamps on my little girl and my little boy because I want them to get be protected because those trees come right, right where their heads are. So we want to make sure we don't go over over their heads and, and mess them up now that we've spent so much time on them. So now I'm just making sure that those masks are really secure. As you can see, I've used them several times. Sometimes they don't have their stickiness anymore. Uh, so I like to make sure that you're, they're really secure onto, onto the background. So this is the little leaves, the small leaf bunch from the original foliage set. And you can see I'm putting it kind of vertical and all I'm really doing is inking up the top of that, the top of that stamp. And I'm not really worried about getting it underneath that line because water is reflective as I was told by one of my subscribers and it's, it's okay if it gets into where the water is going to be, it's fine because it should anyway. So it's just a natural occurrence, which is fine. So I'm just coming in, I'm inking it up that top, just that top spot. And I'm kind of pressing the top of it down first. So that way, and then when I'm stamping it, it's going to give me a nice variation in, in the trees. So you have some in the front that are dark and then I move back to the ones that are lighter. 
And then I'm just, I'm just going to continue to put them in. I wanted them to look like it was a couple of mountains back there, which I think at the end I didn't realize, and it wasn't on purpose, but it ended up being in like a heart shape, which was great because it just adds another element of interest. But it wasn't, it wasn't something that I, that I intended to do. I just was just stamping, and sometimes things just emerge the way they're supposed to. Okay, so now I'm taking my scissors because my nails weren't, weren't pulling up that little mask off of the boat. And sometimes just to get it started, I'll put my scissors under there just to get those masks up easily. So I've taken that mask off, and now I'm going to start coming in with my brush and just going around and adding water to the, the leaves and the trees behind this little boat. Being very care I'm being very careful not to get too close to the boat. So I want to make sure I'm I'm pulling the color out of the lines, but making sure I'm not gonna touch that that poor little that little boat so I don't make a muck mess of it. A mucky mess of it. <laughs> and as you see now, I'm pulling some of that green right down into the water. So it looks like it's reflecting into the water. I also want to be careful that I'm not getting too close to my kids. I'm going to be adding some blue in there after I soften all the lines for these little greens. This, the little uh, from the trees in the background. So when I'm softening anything that I'm stamping with this little small leaf bunch See, I'm pulling that out. So I really just pulled a little bit of color where the where the water is going to be. And when I use this this little stamp, which I do use a lot now, I never used to. And then I kind of figured out a couple of things that I could use with it, so it was great. But because I used just the around the top of it and stamped that down, I kind of pull the color from the top into the bottom. So that's how you get that variation in color. And it does a really nice job of looking like a, a different bunches of trees all made into which make up the mountain. So now as you see I'm coming in and I'm doing that front layer and just adding a little bit of water and just jumping your brush around. That's all you have to do. It's it's not these little trees are not difficult. They're way in, in the in the back way in the distance so they're not going to have a lot of definition um, you're not going to want to put too much water because you do want to see some of those lines just to give it the look of different trees but by no means you have to make sure that you can see every single li little leaf so I'm kind of just smushing it all together being careful of of the other elements that are in my scene here So just continuing to add some water. And if you feel like you just added, you needed a little more depth, you can always add, put some color from your palette, like I'm doing here, and just adding a little bit of color here and there, just so that you get a lot of darks and lights. It's kind of reminding me a little bit of like a St. Martin or a St. Thomas, where they have all these hills, these beautiful lush, uh, mountains if I could put if I could put little buildings in there that would be really cool too I think but I just wanted it to look like you know it was a, a hill or a mountain with with trees on it I think I got that across <laughs> so now I'm softening out those the lines underneath this boat and into the water because I'm gonna I'm gonna start adding some blue into the water. So I'm, I'm adding the blue right along that horizon first because that's where it's going to be the darkest because it's further away from us. I wanted, I'm going to add a couple of different blues I believe. Like I said, I did this painting um, quite a while ago so I don't really think I used too many blues. Maybe just one and I just made it more intense in the back along that horizon and underneath that boat. 
but water is so easy. You really just kind of go in in lines behind. But you also want to make sure you're not coloring it in solid. You want to have variations. You want to have darks and lights. It's just going to start getting lighter as I get closer to the shore. And then being very careful around this little baby boat because I don't want to come near it and touch it and then have the color bleed out into the water. And making sure that you bring those, just like with the trees, just like with the sand, I'm going to add some more sand in in a little while. But you want to make sure everything comes right to the edge of that, of that mask so you get this nice crisp line around, around your work. Or I don't even know what I'm supposed to, what I'm trying to say about <laughs> I want it to look like an oval when we're done. So it almost is like a little frame inside of, of this little painting. I just took the fine tip of one of, of a red marker and just added a couple lines onto the sails just to give them a little more interest. And then I'm just going to take the the fine point of my African violet and I'm just darkening these up darkening the sails up in the little boat so that it really kind of pops out it kind of seemed to me to get a little bit of lost a little bit lost and I wanted to make sure that it you could really see it and then just by adding a couple of little lines underneath it gives a little bit of a highlight underneath the boat and makes it look like it's kind of sailing, gives it a little motion. It just gives it a little more interest. I know, that's the word of the day, interest. <laughs> so now I have my sky and I have my, or not my sky, I have my water done and my trees done. So now I'm going to come in here and add a little bit of sky. Now I'm not going to color this in. I want it to look like it's it's clouds. So I'm just jumping my brush around. But I want to make sure again that it comes right up to where that mask is. I think clouds and water are probably some of my the funnest things or the things I like the most. Funnest? I don't think funnest is an is a word. But anywho, I just really like to be able to make clouds and water and it's very relaxing and you can't mess them up. You can't mess clouds up. They don't have to look great. They just have to look like billowy pieces of cotton, really. So now I'm coming in and I'm just adding some details. Now this is something you could have stopped and been done and signed and dated and you would have been way done. Me, I just wanted to come in and darken up some of those shadows, darken her hair up a little bit. You'll see I'll come in and I'll add a little bit more pink. I think she got, she made me feel like she got a little faded and I just wanted her bathing suit to be, have a little more pop of color. So once I lay the color down, again, I'm bringing it up a little and softening out those edges. You can do a lot to alter these little kids. You can put them in winter gear, you can put them in summer gear, you can put them in sweatshirts and, and jeans. It all depends on what you want to do. So now I just took off the, the mask. As you can see it gives a nice frame around it. And then I'll just come in and, and like I said, add, add a little bit more color just to give those shadows just a little more pop. This little orange bathing suit was so cute. And I'm just going to soften out those lines. So nothing worse to me in my eye when I see like just a, a line of color that's not blended. So I try to come in and lay color down and then I try to blend out just the edges of that color. 
So you still get the intensity of the color, but you don't get a harsh line that just looks like you just threw a line of color in under there. Now I'm adding the pink to her bathing suit and I'm going to I'm going to make it really dark at the top and on the right hand side cuz that's where the light would be. It would be hitting on that right hand side. Probably wouldn't be hitting that much because she, they're facing the sun. But this was that's how I did it. I'm just adding that just softening that color out so it has a nice gradation. And then just coming in for some finishing touches, adding a little bit more color to the water. Just to make it a little darker. And like I said, you can stop at any time. It doesn't have to be this in, this much effort going into it, but I'm always I'm always going in and doing little extra this and a little extra that and Mostly because I just really like, I like to spend my time painting, so. <laughs> I put a little color on my brush and I'm just adding a little bit more to those, to those trees in the background. Just so they're a little bit darker. You could also add in some browns if you wanted to. I wanted this to really look like it was summertime. So I didn't go I didn't go down that route, but you could do it. It would look beautiful with um reds and browns and yellows just for if you wanted it to look like a fall scene. That's definitely something that you could do. And now I'm just going to come in and I'm going to sign and date. And that's it. So I just want to thank you all for coming back to my channel and watching my videos. I appreciate all my subscribers and I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the future. Have a nice day.